Hi, Rick Hood here with Navigation Northwest and Hood Consulting and Services. I just wanted to share with you in a few minutes some of the features that are in my Topo Train Navigator Pro version 9.0. The help file does a great job of explaining, I think, uh, the new features. I just wanted to give you kind of a visual from my experience. Okay, I think the easiest thing to do is here is a standard one to 24,000 topo for an area just north of where I live by a few miles. I think what I'll do is go to the two map mode and then I'm going to lock these. This is a newer feature. And so now when I scroll here, the other one scrolls exactly the same regardless of the scale of this map. I'm going to go ahead and unlock it now just to show you. So now this one scrolls and this one is independent. I'll relock them. I'll just put it up here so you can see what happens when I lock them. I'll just drag that back down. Now they're locked again. Okay, and I'll give us a little more area here. I'm going to switch this one to a secondary topo map. And you can see when I go to topo, when the 24,000 T for topo, I have this. Uh, right pointing arrow and that indicates there's more than one version here so standard edition and the shaded relief so I'm going to make this window here the shaded relief and it's pulling it from the web I've already looked at it so it came pretty quickly otherwise it just takes a few seconds and you can see the difference and choose the one that works best for you let me just as long as I'm in this window let me get information from that. You can see that was created printed in 2002. Okay, I'll close that out. Now what I'd like to do is show you the same thing in terms of different options you have in a higher resolution map, which is typically the aerial. Here's the 1 to 12,000. And I'm just going to center. here. I'll switch to two map mode. Sometimes you might want to watch, or I'm sorry, you might want to view it in a earlier map just because the cloud coverage was better when they did that. But I'm going to go ahead and lock it again. And then I'm going to come up here to the 1 to 12,000. This one is the active window. They're both the current version. So I'm going to come here, scroll down to 1 to 12,000. I have not only the 2009, which is a standard edition, but the 2006. I'm going to click on 2006. It'll pull this off the web. And now I have two versions. Of course, if I draw an icon on one or put an icon on one, it'll put them on both. I'll unlock it. Just so I can scroll, excuse me, me, delete that, grab my proper tool, unlock it, bring this back, lock them again, then I'll change this to the 1 to 24,000. I could also go the other way in town. As you know, we have the one, the 3600, available often to us. The last thing I wanted to show, actually, there's two things I want to share with you. They're both related. One is, if we want to, I'll close this out here. If we want to get driving directions for this, Grab, well, this is the way I do it. Grab your centering tool. Come close to where you want to be. Just make it this area here. And then right click. Web links, brand new. Driving directions. There's the point. I'm just going to type in Edmonds, Washington, which will give me downtown. But I want to swap that. So now it goes from Edmonds to the point that I indicated. Gives me the driving time 
and directions, standard Google. All good. The related part is, is I can now turn on streets. So go to view, go to layers visible, scroll down in the layers, the streets, click on that. That'll put streets as an overlay on the map and I'll just zoom out to the 1 to 12,000. Take it one step farther, zoom out to the 1 to 24,000. And that's some of the, the new features. Uh, I think they're going to be adding more maps and more additions in the near future. But again, check with uh, my topo for that. Good stuff. I think they're um, going to make this extremely useful for all of us, whether we're in search and rescue, uh, land management, um, or real estate, for example. Okay, thank you for your time.